Hey guys, this is Killrob speaking and today we are back with Altdorf Postal Services in the Cyclist Tactics with their little journey from humble beginnings to the best postal service road bike team in the world. And we just got a letter from Altdorf Postal Services themselves, of course in written format. Let me show it to you here. They have made up a little list for us of achievements they want to see during our run here. We have to no less than win all of the tours that are available. And um, th this only exists on paper, of course, as uh, you would expect from an old Hedvesian institution. Um, and we are going to fill it out as we go along. Right now, we are in the Basara Sprints and we're going to continue right there. There was a fun little bug that uh, snuck in there, which has now been fixed in this version that I'm playing. This is Hotfix 2. And uh, that was that your rider started with negative experience for the level. <laughs> so you kind of had to make all the experience up to your level and then you started again. That has now been remedied and I have remedied it in my database as well. It's an easy edit to make. Just uh, edit 150 to the experience that I got so far. It started you on zero experience instead of the 150 that is required to reach level two. Now, let's take a look at the upcoming stages. We do want to finish these uh, two stages and then probably head into the next one because these should be pretty quick as well. Klaus Fuchs currently in fifth overall. That does bode well, but we do need to gain some time on these big three. That won't be easy. Looking at our recovery, we can see that Klaus is already struggling just a little bit to recover from these efforts. He has lost some percentage recovery, but recovered fully for this next day, uh, also in attack points. And that does bode pretty well. And I think, you, you know what, we could try to, with Gerhard, launch an attack over this little climb and uh, drag Klaus with us. Maybe that could work. Maybe the uh, others are thinking the exact same thing and we get crushed, but we shall see. Let's get into it. As if they knew. Jan Schmidt is going to go um, up and make the first pull for the day and everyone else is just falling back and enjoys the ride. Don't fall back too much though. This is just 180 long and that means the... Uh, high speed section of this stage is going to start more or less now. One important fix that this hotfix has made is to bring back the display of the momentum blocking. You can see that clearly here now as I'm hovering over these nodes to move to. Um, the rules are as follows. The um, relay ignores its own momentum blocking, like these nodes, I'm going to move from there, uh, these nodes. Um, oof. Oof. Okay, that's rough. <laughs> uh, Jan Schmidt is no more. <laughs> okay, that was, it was nice knowing you, Jan. Um, everyone else moved way further. But you see here, these nodes are now blocked for everyone who's in the group, while people who are in the relay can ignore this kind of momentum blocking. So, quite simply, in normal play like this, uh, without being across the finish line or anything. It is such that the relay can move freely and blocks the momentum blocks the group, where the group is P1 and the relay is P0 in this case. Uh, and no one from the relay can attack because everyone else in the relay, even if they were ahead, can react to that attack. So that's the disadvantage and the advantage of being in the relay. While if you're in the group, you get blocked by the momentum blocking from the relay, but you can attack anyone who's in front of you without them having the chance to react. In sprints, additionally, you have momentum blocking from velocity gain. Every rider has a default of one velocity, which means it takes one attack point to pass a rider. But if they increase their velocity uh, by spending attack points, two attack points equals one velocity. They also generate at the same time when creating this velocity additional momentum block points uh, ahead of them. So that's the rules basically. And we're going to see them in action plenty in this Let's Play. 
Yeah, this tempo is just insane. Jan won't be able to catch up the <laughs> to this anymore. He's just going to stay ahead of the time limit, I guess. Even, even that will not be all that easy because he has no one to give him any kind of slipstream. Sucks to be Jan. The favorites have already moved forward. But I think if the Peloton is going this hard, I'm going to risk it and stay stay put in P2 to get the extra slipstream and um, go to f further to the front before this little bit here because this has negative two slipstream and I do want to be spooled to the front there so that I don't need too many attack points to actually get to the front okay wow this is getting a little insane uh, I have to move to the front now which is also just ahead of the sector, but I didn't expect them to be there now. <laughs> that move was a 28. 28 in a little amateur race. Not to, uh, across the finish line, but just in the middle of the stage. <laughs> that, that is rough. That is very rough. There weren't any technical sectors here, but that's a maximum of seven slipstream from this sector. So, um, yeah. You can see that here, Slipstream 7. But uh, that requires two attack points. Fortunately, though, we do have 23 because we saved a lot of attack points in the last stage when we chose to not sprint to get third place. Uh, yeah, that was the... Was it the wall of Ali Sultanov or something? <laughs> I think so. Anyway, uh, here we go. We're following along and now we need to move to P1 so that we don't get lost with the peloton that cannot follow anymore. And there we have Klaus and Gerhard moving up to the front. Okay, could have waited another turn, but uh, better safe than sorry, right? So there, there we have that, uh, following along. Somehow I'm doubting we're going to get away, but I do have Gerhard put in front. Let's see what happens. Okay, interesting. So the yellow jersey and all the favorites are going higher up the road while the peloton is moving short. Now we of course have to follow here. We are the only rider in here with uh, 0.03 though. That means Johnny Long is missing. These three guys are with us in, uh, in the leading group. But Johnny Long is missing, so that bodes well for us to get fourth place after this, if we somehow manage to stay with them. Due to the terrain, they are choosing the wise move here, and that is to just land on the first node of this technical downhill sector, and then it's going to be very fast to the finish. Ooh! Oh, now that's interesting. Klaus could actually make a max attack here, and break free of them, but uh, why would he? <laughs> I mean, this is, it's not a smart move to make because these guys are so damn fast, they would catch him um, it's with just two fields advantage. And it doesn't give us any advantage in terms of terrain to move too further. So yeah, yeah, let's just follow along. Oh, wow. Okay. We do have a bit of an interesting situation on our hands here. Check out the stats of the riders next to me that I'm highlighting. He still has nine attack points. That's less than two moves. Uh, he has four attack points, four attack points. Well, that's Gerhard, he only has five. Uh, Billy King, only four attack points. Ali Sultanov, only four attack points. And we have 16. That smells like an advantage. Yeah, so you know what? My prediction here is that these guys are going to move somewhat short to not burn out their reserves here, because this is a technical sector as well, right? Um, and maybe that gives me the chance to attack, because this is also going to, uh, because of the penalty here, a minus one slipstream means Minus one to momentum blocking. Let's see if we can get away. Was, hmm. Gerhard, you go behind these guys. Ah, no, that only leaves you with four. Uh, only four attack points. Now that's not enough. 
<laughs> you stay where you are. <laughs> Let Klaus do the thing. Okay, not quite, not quite. They did make a max attack move here. But... Okay, Ma uh, Matteo Testa is missing. Billy King and Sul uh, Ali Sultanov are going... To, they are going to lose a little bit of attack points still. So maybe... Uh, or are they? Uh, Klaus has a plus one and downhill, so this section is quite good for him. But maybe they are losing some attack points, maybe not. It's just seven riders remaining. Okay. Omar El Masari. Uh, Masri. Sorry, <laughs> is uh, currently leading out with zero attack points. They are all in group. They are all in group, so I'm in a good position here. Two attack points, two attack points. They are burnt out. <laughs> okay, okay. Gerhard is going to be put into the relay, and he's going to make a max attack move across the line. So, leading out the bunch. Then I would... Oh... Maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe that's a bad idea. Their momentum blocking across the flat will be quite significant still. But... Mm, he only puts in three attack points. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is another minus one here, so that is in our favor. Klaus stays at the back and then tries to attack them. I don't see them generating much momentum, so... Uh, let's see. Or maybe, maybe we can, let's see, that, there's this one, he can generate one velocity, he can generate zero, he can generate zero at this point, he can also generate zero. Um, okay, how many attack points do we have then? We can spend five in the sprint. I need to cover my bases. Either I'm able to attack and get time on all the whole bunch or I'm part of the sprint and can win the stage. Can I make the best of both of these options? No, I don't think so because if I place between these they would be able to follow my attack with Klaus. Because they still have lots of power there and they are good flat riders which uh, Klaus is not. So I'm going to uh, just go and YOLO it with with Gerhardt and see where we'll end up then in the sprint. That is blocking... Ooh. That is blocking a little too far ahead to my, for my taste. He's the... Uh, he's going to apply the momentum block so he can force the sprint. Fortunately, counting here is pretty easy. So we do have 10 free movement points. And that leads us to here. And then we have um, 9 additional speed for him here because he has plus one in flat and he has another eight points on top of that so that actually gets us to there so he could move all the way to there that is um, Walter Ross and then Jonathan can't go that far Billy King however can go an additional nine plus three so twelve because he has the plus three in flat. And he is the one who can go the furthest, I believe. Because we have uh, two there, two there. Yeah, he is the one with the most beef in him. So I'm going to deliberately let him have the chance to overtake us. I think that might work out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, because then Klaus Fox can follow Bill, uh, can follow Billy and Ali, and can out sprint them and win the stage. If I wanted to block them all, I would just have to go to that node, and no one would have the chance to get past. But now let's calculate where 12 is. I think that's uh, this is 9, uh, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, this node is the 12th. So I want to keep that one empty. Yeah, yeah, let's do it like this and see what happens. No sprinting for Gerhard. There we go. It's exactly happened the way I thought it would. Everyone is following him. And now we can win the stage by out sprinting the sprinters with Klaus Fox. Uh, that's Fox for you, Englishman. 
And uh, no sprint required, only two attack points. Isn't it beautiful? There we go. What a play! <laughs> that, was, that was really solid. Uh, he he uh, outfoxed them that, uh, in the proper way. That's why I called him uh, Klaus Fuchs, by the way. I didn't expect him to outfox sprinters on sprint stages, but there you go, I don't complain. And we even got some time on Omar El Masri. And that means we're now in third. But it will be tough to gain time on Ali and Billy here. Klaus has recovered fully. That is looking very good. And Gerhard not looking all too hot, but he did do his job there in the sprint. Misleading the whole bunch. The other brilliant thing about that last move was that we basically also forced their hand in terms of general standing. If they had moved short and uh, just joined the others, then we would have been able to uh, just overtake everyone and be on top now. So they had to move further as far as they could and then be out sprinted to give me the win. Uh, because they had no, no option there. That was really quite good. Already made it to halfway stage. Just through this little valley we go in one little jump with the peloton. Pace has been pretty high, around 20-ish the whole time. Not exceedingly high, but I think that is what is coming up next. I'm still in P2, just chilling. Uh-oh, what's happening now? Someone moved to there. Who's that? Johnny Long is attacking? Oh. Okay. The Peloton can't move there. And thus, Klaus can't move there, and Gerd can't move there. He's trying something. I'm going to go there and hope the... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Billy is attacking us, along with Johnny. That is a bold move. But a smart one, I believe. So, I do have to make my move up in the penalty and Jan needs to just crush it up front with his, like, two attack points he has. He is already in the relay, and there are two more favorites in here, including Ali Sultanov. So he is going to be a bit pissed as well, that's good news. But, hmm, should I even... I just maybe just pull Gerhard up to the front or is this too risky the terrain is easy there are no hurdles along the way this is the maximum hurdle we have minus one in slipstream peloton is healthy 11 attack points still 5-5 five, five, so they would be able to follow everything because they do get peloton to uh, slipstream I think that means that I'm not going to move Klaus up yet, but Gerhard is going to, and he's going to help out pull the relay if necessary. Oh my god. Okay, that's an attack by Billy, isn't it? Um, yes, but he's empty. That was almost a max move by the Peloton. Holy. Jan has exactly five attack points left. The Oh, oh, the favorites are gathering behind the relay, getting themselves ready for, for a potential attack. And there we have Gerhard. Is he useful in any capacity here? Do I even want to have a sprint happen? Maybe I don't. So Klaus is going to move up, use two attack points. He has plenty after all, at the moment. <laughs> it might change. But yeah, what an interesting situation. So, Billy is up front, by himself, he can't move that hard anymore. Well, I say that, but he has a plus three and flat. And there we... Wow, he's so fast, despite having no attack. Um, Peloton can just barely follow. They do... Oh, no, no, they still have seven attack points, so that's fine. Uh, there we go, Jan is even getting a point <laughs> for, the, for the sprint rating. Uh oh and now the peloton seems to be falling apart a little bit after the sprint rating. Don't know how many are going to rejoin the relay. If very few do, then this will all splinter apart and it would become a free fall basically. 
I don't know if that happens, so I'm going to go to the front with Jan and try to pull it together. And with Klaus, I do want to be on the wheel of Ali Sultanov. He is not looking too hot for two more turns, but for one turn he is, and he might try something. We do need to grab Billy as well, but I think that is going to happen automatically with Jan pulling his little heart out. Um, or not. How the... <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Billy is so damn fast. Holy. <laughs> he doesn't have any attack points left. He just nuked us from there. And he's empty. Uh, I, I thought that was a bold move, but man, that was a bold move. And it seems to be paying off. So the Peloton won't be able to to grab him. Uh, that means it does turn into a free fall. Hmm. Uh, do I even want, at this point, to momentum block anything here? They have moved to there. Because uh, if I move here, I, I'm also blocking... Uh, Klaus from getting out of there and trying to follow Billy. So I'm going to go short with him. So, okay. But Bradley Woods is in here as well. He might be pulling like crazy. So I'm going to go short with um, Jan to not momentum block anyone. And if Bradley is moving short as well, then it's becoming a free fall. But it's not going to block Klaus's attack. So, we're going to go there. They... They pulled it off with a ma Oh, Bradley pulled it off. Okay, good, good. Bradley was actually able to close with Billy. Okay, this is turning into an interesting sprint after all. Bradley is still super fast. This next move is, of course, across the line. So we are going to see a 6-6 six, six, plus 1 move across the line. So 6-6 six, six, plus 1 plus 9. <laughs> That's 12-13 plus 9. Is that just a 22? Am I missing something? That's not very far. Yeah, okay. That's just a 22. So the lead out will be a 22. That's not very aggressive. Billy is shafted, as you see here. It didn't quite work out for him. And if I'm looking at this, to me it seems like Omar El Masri is going to be the wheel we want to follow. There's Johnny, though. Ah, oh, you bastard. Okay, I'm going to sign off on this. Maybe I can disrupt a little bit more by putting Gerhard here somewhere. Uh, I'm going to put Gerhard on my wheel so that there is an additional body in between me and Ali. <laughs> Not that it will help, poor little Gerhard. Okay, it is a mass sprint. Just look at the momentum blocking that was achieved. No chance in hell to win this. Um, so we just all get the same time and that's that. Let's see how far we can progress. We get to fifth. <laughs> Not very impressive. And there we have it, our first proper uh, tour that we have on our bucket list as well. Let's see how we did. Well, uh, we came third. 0.03 turns behind. Couldn't beat Ali or Billy in the end. So that is something that uh, must be reserved for the next season then, I would say. Ah, oh, and we got shafted on green as well. Johnny and Ali just have one extra point on us. Oh, man. Race summary, please. What do you have for us? It was a successful run, I have to say. That is um, all looking quite good. Got, well, 63 uh, prestige points. 25 for that first place that we got with Klaus outfoxing everyone. And... Overall, I'm happy. Oh! Oh, look at that! We did get a level up. Isn't that beautiful? Klaus 
is now a level 3 rider. Yeah, he did get the 66 plus 25 and something something and additional bonuses for this race having higher prestige than his level. So that got multiplied up. So that gives us a beautiful little level up. We can spend one attribute point and that one point... I don't know. Where do we want to put it? Let's take a look at the next races. It is a tour and the Vison, but, but Vison is out of question because he has his uh, fitness trough uh, right there. But the Vitessa spring open, that, that is looking rough. That is too tough. <laughs> that is way too tough. Um, maybe energy, just so that he lasts longer and has slightly better recovery over the course of a tour. I think that would help. So 84 points it is, instead of 78. Yeah, yeah, sounds good to me. And of course, we have to scout for someone who has some li little pieces of talent uh, or something. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> How are we going to get a rider who can win for us some of the little oddball races? Maybe Tech and Cobble. Do we have tours? that are cobbled in amateur. Let's see, um, there are none. So they appear in mixed races, which are accessible from Pro Tour. So we can always go there once we are in Pro League, if we wanted to. We don't have to finish them at first place just yet. So we can focus on someone who is maybe a little bit better in the flat and time trials. Um, yeah, but why not? Why not see if we can find an, a weird one here from Hitvesia, of course. So uh, we do get. Uh, no, that's not. What? An 11? <laughs> uh, yeah, and he's actually quite fast. He's very fast. But is he useful? I think the answer is no. Well, I think he's the best out of the bunch, though, which says a lot. So uh, yeah, I'm going to pick him. And. I believe that's that. Where where do we rank at the moment? 15th midfield. Anyway, I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.